Hi students, in today's video class, we are going to discuss about the different types of beam specimen interaction that can take place. In the last few videos, we had been discussing about electron microscopy, giving particular importance to scanning electron microscopy. Here, the energetic electrons coming from the electron gun, which passes through a set of uh, condenser lenses, scanning coils, objective lenses, finally falls on the target or the sample. In the sample, this electron beam interacts with the atoms there and produce secondary electrons which are ejected out. These secondary electrons are then detected by the detector, amplified and the corresponding image of the sample is procured. Now in today's class, we are discussing about the different possible beam specimen interaction. That is, when the electron beam falls on the specimen, what all interactions or what all reactions can take place there? As a result of these interactions, what all emissions can come out from the sample? Okay, so first we are discussing about the interactions that occur when the energetic electron beam just falls on the thick or bulk sample. It is the energetic beam of electrons are simply incident on our bulk sample. Then what all interactions can take place and what are the emissions possible? When an electron beam falls on a thick sample, then secondary electron emissions take place, backscattered electron emission can take place, X-ray emission can take place, cathodoluminescence can take place and auger electron emissions can also occur. Out of these, secondary electron emission and backscattered uh, electron emissions are the ones that are predominantly detected by the scanning electron microscope for imaging. When an electron beam falls on a sample, X-ray emissions can take place and these X-ray emissions are utilized in energy dispersive uh, X-ray spec spectroscopy which is a technique used, I told you in the last class, EDS or EDAX, that is energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, a technique used together with SEM for understanding the composition of the elements present in the sample. Cathodoluminescence technique and auger electron emissions when measured give us information about the sample. Next we discuss about the interactions that occur when energetic electron beam is transmitted through the sample. When the electron beam is, cat is transmitted through the sample Three type of emissions can take place. First one, the unscattered electron emission. That is, the energetic electron beam simply passes through the thin sample, comes out unscattered. The second case is elastically scattered electron. That is, the incident energetic electron beam undergoes elastic scattering and it comes out of the specimen. Third case is um, inelastically scattered electron. That is, the incident electron beam undergoes inelastic scattering and inelastic, uh, inelastically scattered electrons emission takes place. All these three are transmitted electrons and these transmitted electrons are detected in transmission electron microscope for imaging. So all these interactions and the corresponding emissions I have shown here in this schematic diagram. All the diagrams shown in this session have been downloaded from Google. So the incident electron beam falls on my sample. When it's simply incident on the sample, the different kinds of emissions or ejections possible are secondary electron emission, backscattered electron emission, X-ray emission, cathodoluminescence and auger electron emission. When the incident beam of electron transmits 
through the sample either it can come out as unscattered electron beam or elastically scattered electron beam or inelastically scattered electron emissions all these three are transmitted electrons and all of them are detected in a transmission electron microscope for imaging first let us discuss about the detection of secondary ele electrons in a sample now we are going to discuss in detail how each one of these ejections uh, occur and what purpose does it serve in our microscopy process so the first one is detection of secondary electrons so how does the ejection of secondary electron take place when an energetic electron in the electron beam comes near an atom in the specimen it will impart a part of its energy to a low energy electron usually the electron in the cation so what happens is when the incident beam is falls falls on the sample it will provide or it will give a part of its energy to a low energy electron that is a low energy electron means an electron which is closer to the nucleus that is our cation electron mostly to the cation electron and this electron gets emitted forming the secondary electrons the higher energy electrons will be present in the other orbits so the cation electron mostly the cation electron gets comes out of the sample and they are collected to form images in scanning electron microscope so once again i'll repeat when the energetic beam of electron is incident on the sample the electron in the beam will impart a part of its energy to a low energy electron in the atom usually the cation electron as a result the atom is getting ionized and this uh, electron is ejected out of our specimen and the atom gets um, ionized now this the speciality of the secondary electrons are that they will have very low energy in the uh, range of that is very small kinetic energy in the range of say 5 electron volt now the number of uh, secondary electrons is highly topography related this is because due to their low energies that is nearly 5 electron volt only the secondary electrons near the surface of the sample can come out so the secondary electrons are responsible for giving us information about the surface effects or the surface nature or the topography of the sample i hope you have understood because the secondary electrons are having low energy only those secondary electrons near the surface of my sample will come out and they will give information regarding the surface of my sample or the topography of my sample next we come to the detection of back scattered electrons now what are back scattered electrons so when the beam of incident electrons falls on the atom a few of these incident electrons get scattered backward by very large angles nearly 180 degree so such electrons are called back scattered electron so this is the incident electron beam and it gets elastically scattered and it comes out of the specimen through uh, after deflection through very large angles nearly 180 degree and these are called back scattered electrons the back scattered electron interaction is used to differentiate different parts of the specimen having different atomic numbers this is because 
the production rate of the backscattered electron varies with the specimen's atomic number. I, I hope you have understood that is the production of backscattered electrons varies with the specimen's atomic number. So depending on, uh, suppose your specimen contains atoms of a number of elements. So depending on the atomic number of the element involved, the rate of backscattered electron production varies. So elements having higher atomic number appears brighter or it will emit a larger number of backscattered electrons than those elements having lower atomic number. So in a sample, we will be able to distinguish or differentiate where the um, low atomic number uh, elements are present and where the high atomic number elements are present. That is the rate of production of backscattered electron is related to the atomic number of the elements present in the sample. So, for a higher atomic number element, the rate of production is high of backscattered electrons is high and um, we get a uh, bright part in our image whereas for lighter atomic number elements, the um, brightness reduces and we get a darker region. So, backscattered electron emission is used to de detect areas with different chemical composition in a sample. It helps us to identify the different regions having different chemical compositions. Next, we go to the detection of X-rays. This is again a figure showing backscattered electron. A primary electron is coming and it is undergoing uh, elastic scattering and comes out as a backscattered electron beam. Next, we go on to the detection of X-rays. I think all of you is all of you are familiar with how X-rays are emitted. I'll show you the figure. That is, when the primary electron beam is incident on an atom, sometimes it will dislodge or it will knock off a casial low energy casial electron. A primary beam electron in the casial electron na porteke thatti then what will happen? There is a vacancy created here. So a higher energy electron will jump to its position. Now there is a difference in energy. This electron has higher energy and this is an orbit of lower energy. So the difference in energy is given out as characteristic X-rays. This is how X-ray emission takes place. So when a primary electron um, is incident, on an atom, sometimes what will happen, it will knock off or it will dislodge an, a low energy electron, usually the casual electron. So it will, it will be knocked off and a high energy electron will jump to the place of this or jump to the position of this low energy electron. And the difference in energy here is given off as characteristic X-rays. Now, if our SEM, that is scanning electron microscope, is equipped for EDACs, that is energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, then these characteristic X-rays can be detected. You, the scanning electron microscope is not sensitive to characteristic X-rays, but if it is used in conjunction with EDACs or energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy technique, then these characteristic X-rays can be detected. 
the x rays emitted from a particular atom or x rays emitted from an atom of a particular element will have a characteristic energy unique to that element adayidu oru particular element inde atathil ninnu porthu varuna x ray ku adinde daya oru unique value undavu adayidu aa x ray de energy de value kandal namukku manasilavum edu element inde atom aanu ee sample il ullathu okay thus we can understand and the intensity of this x rays intensity means the number of x rays emitted per unit area per unit time from that from the intensity of the x ray we can understand what is the amount of that particular element present in my sample x ray de energy il ninnu idu ede element aanennu x ray de intensity il ninnu verunna x ray beam inde intensity il ninnu ആ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ എലിമെൻറ്റിൻ്റെ എത്ര പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് നമ്മുടെ സാമ്പിളിൽ പ്രസൻ്റ് ആണ് എന്നുള്ളതും നമുക്ക് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ സാധിക്കും സോ ദാറ്റ് അബൌട്ട് ഡിറ്റക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് എക്സ് റേസ് നെറ്റ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് വീ കം ടു കാതോഡോ ലൂമിനസൻസ് കാതോഡോ ലൂമിനസൻസ് മീൻസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ദി എമിഷൻ ഓഫ് ലൈറ്റ് വെൻ ആറ്റംസ് ആർ എക്സൈറ്റഡ് ബൈ ഹൈ എനർജി ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് Uh, when the atoms which are excited by the high energy electrons return to their ground state what happens when the high energy electron beam is incident on my target a number of atoms get excited these ex- excited atoms de excite to the ground state emitting uh, uh, radiations having wavelength in the visible light spectrum so the spectrum displays a variety of colors or the image in the cathode luminescence is in real colors so corresponding to the different atoms different atoms will give out ejections or emission or emission it will emit radiations having different colors in the visible light spectrum so this is cathode luminescence cathode luminescence means it is the emission of light when atoms excited by high energy electrons return to their ground state in scanning electron microscope we can attach cathode luminescence detectors which will collect all these all the light emitted by this specimen and an- will analyze their wavelengths and in the end what will happen the end result is the display of a spectrum or an image of cathode luminescence in our real color so that this region represents a particular element the other color represents some other element the third color represents a third element and so on so here again the sem has to be used together with the cathode luminescence detectors okay to uh, analyze detect and analyze these visible light photons and then we come to the detection of auger electrons now what are auger electrons i told you when an energetic electron beam falls on a specimen i think i have a diagrammatic representation here yeah so when a, an energetic electron from our incident beam falls on the sample one of the electrons get a low energy electron gets knocked off and in this process what will happen a vacancy will be created a high energy electron will jump from its place to this vacancy and the difference in energy i told you it's given off as x rays now suppose this difference in energy is transferred to an outer electron and the electron gets emitted then this phenomenon is called auger emission endana sambhavichathu nammada primary beam il ninnu or electron vannu or low energy electron ne therpichu adinte sthanathekku or high energy electron chaadi that difference in energy here is used to kick off one of the outer shell electrons and these il- kicked off electrons or the emitted electrons are called auger electrons and this emission is called auger electron emission now these auger electrons also have characteristic energy which are unique to an element 
ഈ പുറത്തു വരുന്ന ഓഗ്ര ഇലക്ട്രോൺസിൻ്റെ എനർജിയിൽ നിന്ന് ഏതാണ് ഈ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ എലിമെൻ്റ് എന്ന് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഓരോ എലിമെൻറ്റിനും അത് പുറത്തു വിടുന്ന ഓഗർ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസിൻ്റെ എനർജി അതിന് മാത്രം സ്പെസിഫിക് ആയിട്ടുള്ളതായിരിക്കും അതായത് ഒരു എലിമെൻറ്റിൻ്റെ ഓഗർ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ എമിഷൻ എനർജി ആയിരിക്കില്ല അടുത്ത എലിമെൻറ്റിൻ്റെ ഓഗർ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസിന് ഉണ്ടാവുന്ന എനർജി അപ്പോൾ ഈ എനർജികളുടെ വാല്യൂവിൽ നിന്ന് നമുക്ക് എന്ത് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഫ്രം ദി എനർജി ഓഫ് ദി ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ഓഗർ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് എമിറ്റഡ് വി ക്യാൻ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് വിച്ച് ഓൾ എലിമെൻറ്റ്സ് ആർ ഓർ വാട്ട് ഓൾ എലിമെൻറ്റ്സ് ആർ പ്രസൻറ്റ് ഇൻ അ സാമ്പിൾ നെക്സ്റ്റ് വി ഗോ ടു ദി ഡിസ്കഷൻ ഓൺ ദി ട്രാൻസ്മിറ്റഡ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് സോ വെൻ ദി പ്രൈമറി ബീം ഓഫ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ആർ അലൗഡ് ടു ട്രാൻസ്മിറ്റ് ത്രൂ അവർ സ്പെസിമെൻ ഐദർ ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ഗോ അൺസ്കാറ്റേഡ് or elastically scattered or inelastically scattered so the first case when it is uh, going when it is undergoing elastic uh, before this we show you the note here detection of transmitted electrons first case unscattered electron so the incident electrons are transmitted through the thin specimen without any interaction so number of transmitted electron is proportional to the specimen thickness thicker the specimen lesser will be the transmitted unscattered electron so the image will appear dark thinner the specimen more will be the transmitted electron and the image will appear the scanning electro uh, transmission electron microscope image will appear to be lighter okay next about elastic scattering the elastically scattered electron beam so the next two possibilities are in transmission are one is elastic scattering the next one is inelastic scattering in elastic scattering what is happening is the um, electrons the incident electron after the scattering will have the same energy or after scattering there will be no loss or loss of energy then such a such a scattering process is called elastic scattering that is the incident electrons scattered by the atoms in the specimen suffers no loss of energy then it is an elastically scattered electron all such incident electrons scattered by the same atomic spacing will be scattered through the same angle all such similar angle scattered electrons will superimpose to form a pattern of spots with each spot corresponding to a particular atomic spacing so the patterns of spots can give information about the orientation atomic arrangements and the phases present in the sample so we'll discuss once again what is the importance of the elastically scattered electrons so this incident electrons after scattering suffers no loss of energy then it is called elastically scattered electrons now all the incident electrons having the same energy scattered through the same angle all the um, elastically scattered electrons which are scattered through the same angle can be focused and they will form a pattern of spots and these spots corresponds to a particular atomic spacing so the pattern of these spots can give us information about the atomic arrangements or the atomic spacings and the phases present in the sample next we come to inelastically scattered electrons when the incident electrons interact with the specimen and lose energy in the process they become inelastically scattered electrons now the inelastically scattered electrons can be utilized for detection in two ways so i told you when the primary electron beam is uh, incident on the atoms in the sample and the, if suppose the electron beam loses its energy in the process then it becomes uh, an 
inelastically scattered electron. The inelastically scattered electron can be utilized in two ways. One is electron energy loss spectroscopy. That is the inelastic loss of energy by the incident electron is characteristic to a particular element. And by uh, determining how much is this energy loss, we can de determine which all elements are present in our sample. Because the amount of energy lost is characteristic to a particular element. So, that is the energy of the inelastically scattered electron. The energy of the inelastically element is characteristic to so, from that, you can determine which element. That is the energy of the value of the assembly elements. Now, we will Now, another way in which the inelastically scattered electrons can be used for detection is that they form Kakuchi bands. These are bands of alternating light and dark lines that are formed by inelastic scattering interactions. The width between these bands is inversely proportional to the atomic spacing. So these bands also, these are this is an example of Kakuchi bands, dark and bright bands. Now the width between the atoms or the atomic spacing is proportional to the width between the bands. So uh, Kakuchi bands gives us an information about the atomic spacing. So we have discussed about the different kinds of electron beam and sample interactions which are or specimen interactions which are possible. So I hope the session is clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, please do contact. Thank you.